Not good. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to go through the Injora LCG build with the Stealth X. What I've done here is I've built a custom skid to adapt the Stealth X transmission. Bit of a different setup. Uh, you know, a lot of you folks that build custom crawlers uh, will usually mount the motor further forward. Um, just because of the TRX-4 Injora chassis um, and the layout of the TRX-4 axles and their positioning, um, the motor can be flipped around, but the alignment of the axles and where the output shafts are on the transmission um, <clears throat> made me have to uh, mount the transmission in this orientation. So I've designed a custom skid and um, done something what I think is unique is mount the 3S 1500 drone battery um, up front here. I am currently making some different plates um, in some different areas. The battery mounting, I'll show you how it's laid out. And uh, I'm gonna, this is the V1 version one of the skid, version one of the uh, battery plate. And I'm also working on some body mounts uh, to adapt the TRX4 uh, body mount kit. Uh, so yeah, essentially I took a Injora carbon LCG kit bought a Stealth X transmission, and then um, in Fusion 360, I drew up a plate uh, for the transmission. Played around with different battery placements and realized that I can definitely fit it in here. And what I did, now this, I have a resin printer. This print kind of messed up at the bottom here, but there's the battery, just a 1500 milliamp Z, um, 120C battery. Um, great little batteries. So that's what I'm using. And I took, what comes with the kit is a carbon plate. Um, and then I sort of lobbed it off here. Uh, and I made a plate that goes around the servo. So the servo goes on the original mount. Then the plate goes on top. I added some stainless screws, some alloy washers just to hold everything down. And then the carbon plate mounts to the 3D printed part and uh, mounts the battery. Now, in terms of clearance on the axle, the track bar just barely clears. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so on version two of this mount, the battery tray, where these green nuts are, I've extruded down and recessed the nuts a little bit. Um, I've also thinned out this a little bit. That's about six millimeters now, so I'm going to go down to about four, four and a half. Uh, and then I've also extruded the 45 millimeter width of this down in. So we're going to get about two more millimeters lower with the battery. We're going to get a little more clearance here with the clearance of the nuts and the track bar. And once that's done, the front end will have a little more low CG. So this skid, version one, it did okay. Uh, I can see that I need to add clearance here. So what I'm gonna do is probably uh, in CAD, clear away this area, giving it more clearance so it won't snag on rocks in this area. I can clearance this as well. Um, I was paying attention in the video of where I was getting drag. And yeah, it's definitely, obviously where any skid would drag. So I'm going to thin this out basically. Uh, the, the width will come in 
And I can also probably lower the transmission a little bit. As you can see here, the drive shafts, there's no binding. Um, it's, it's pretty smooth from what I saw in the shakedown run. Um, but I can lower the transmission probably two more millimeters. Um, and what I've done here is the screws to mount the, the skid plate, um, they're not actually tapped into the resin. Um, the resin, I've been experimenting with some tappable, tappable resin. Um, it doesn't tap very well. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand I choose. So with resin prints, I find I have to use a lot of nuts and change designs so that it can accommodate the clearance for a nut. Uh, but what that did is it actually allowed me to make an adjustable skid. I can actually, I can actually adjust with these nuts. This skid is slotted the whole length here. So I can adjust the transmission here, fore and aft. I can also adjust the transmission here, side to side. So I designed it in CAD so that I can easily move around the transmission because this was going to be a custom build, I wanted to be able to put the skid plate in there and move the transmission around and get the best alignment for the shafts, front and back. So it worked out quite well. Um, just on version 2, we need to thin the profile a little bit more, tuck it in here a little bit more, giving it some clearance, and lowering it a little bit by about 2 mils. You might not think that's a lot, but two mils when coming off the shafts actually de decreases deflection quite a bit. Um, so yeah, it should be good in that sense. Um, so with this build, as you can see, I used some inexpensive Enjora shocks. Um, I put the soft springs on and I undid all the preload front and back uh, on the shakedown run. It's got quite a bit of rake. Um, this has seven degrees clearance here as well. Uh, quite a bit of rake and <clears throat> you're probably thinking, oh, you know, it's not very low CG, but it, it is actually, and all the weight is weight forward. Um, the motor is actually quite forward with the skid. Uh, if you can see the bias of the whole chassis here, the motor is here. Yeah, it's it's quite a bit forward. It's probably I don't know the exact bias, but I did some balance testing by standing it up, and also uh, did some testing on the rocks, and it it can go up a pretty steep incline and not roll back. Um, and there's some more we can do. As I said, we're going to lower the battery. We're going to lower the transmission. Um, I only have brass in the front and I also did brass at the link mounts here, here, the upper one, here and here. Um, um, usually you put brass as low as possible, but the truth is about the Injora builds, yes, Injora makes a lot of great stuff inexpensive and allows you to get into the hobby pretty cheap, especially scale crawlers. However, everything that I received was missing hardware. Um, the mounts that came on the front were both from the, I believe, left side. Uh, so the threading of the shock and the mount did not work. I actually was forced to order aftermarket brass mounts or I could have ordered alloy. Uh, but I just chose to order the, the nice black brass. But I was forced to do that because um, it didn't come with the proper hardware. You know, they're all, they're all right here, the plastic ones that you get. And yeah, I think they were all on the left side uh, for the front. So I ordered a full set, put them on. Um, the other thing that was quite an issue was... I had to get from a friend this carbon mount 
they did not ship it with the chassis kit and it caused such an ordeal and trying to get it they didn't believe me um so i luckily had a friend who had this and had this mount so i got it and uh finally could put the chassis together but just be mindful when you're ordering from them that you may be missing some hardware you may be missing parts from the kit and that's just the truth from my experience ordering from them um you know the shocks not that great already starting to leak um could throw some rock lizards on this i may throw some shocks from an old b6 buggy the associated uh you know kashima coated shocks are beautiful uh, i have spare sets from racing so i could throw those on and that would really make it nice We'll see. Um, I'll just run these and see how it goes. And yeah, so far so good. Um, as you see in the footage, uh, first time using the Fusion system and great setup. Uh, we have overdrive in the transmission, overdrive uh, in the front. And uh, yeah, it, it performs pretty good. Uh, a few things I need to do with the steering. Uh, we'll put on the new plate. Um, this resin, I <laughs> broke the first rule I was ever taught in RC racing is don't take your kit for a run without the body on. The body is definitely a protective element of, uh, using your RC. And so I took this out for the shakedown run without, uh, the body. And what had happened was, uh, you know, I broke this, this mount. And I scraped up the <clears throat> carbon in the shocks a little bit, so a little annoyed at myself for doing that, but I was uh, itching to take this thing out, so I couldn't get any heat in the tires and definitely lacking traction. These Enjora um, Rock Tire Super Swampers, I don't know, I'm indifferent about them. Uh, definitely go with Proline tires or... Um, you know, some other brands like Boom Racing or any of the premium crawler brands. I'll know better in the summer when there's, uh, it's a little more hot out and you can get some heat into the tires and on the rocks. Um, uh, we're running the Noble NB4, so we got a little micro receiver up here. It's okay. I could see where some of the other kits are definitely going to outperform this. This is very budget. Uh, I tried to do as cheap as possible. Um, we have the least expensive Fusion 1200. We have a used servo that's extremely powerful, um, you know, but it's on its last legs from 8 scale racing used, so I threw it in there. Um, so, you know, we've got probably a $150 servo, a, a $70 brushless kit, um, some Enjora TRX 4 axles. Uh, some Enjora drive shafts, an Element uh, Stealth X transmission, and uh, some Enjora shocks. Yeah, pretty simple kit. The build probably wasn't over 350, 400 complete. These receivers are 45 bucks. Pretty solid build. These batteries, you can get two for like 40 or 50 bucks. So I'm stoked. It's really good. Can't wait to get some other LCG builds, higher end stuff, maybe from Rock Pirates. Uh, looking forward to making my own chassis and I want to compare everything. Uh, this is different. You can definitely feel the flex in the chassis when you're driving it. Um, I might brace it a little more. Felt kind of sketchy to me sometimes. So we'll keep working on this one and we got some more crawler stuff coming up. I've got an SCX. Uh, base camp builders kit to do uh, we'll do a series on that and we'll keep modifying this um, I also have some painting series coming up with uh, painting this body and some buggy bodies uh, we're going to do a cliffhanger for this guy and we're going to work at some airbrush techniques so stay tuned thanks for watching uh, please like comment and subscribe and thanks for coming back to the channel I really appreciate it and see ya on the rocks.